Hey team, and welcome to Seller Disclosures. We're going to be reviewing the TDS, the Transfer Disclosure Statement, the SPQ, Seller Property Questionnaire, and the ESD, the Exempt Seller Disclosure. So we're going to go over these, but we're actually going over them very briefly because it is not your job and it is not within your scope of duty to go through and fill out the seller disclosures. You're welcome to explain and answer questions to your clients, of course, like we always should, but you are not to fill these out. In fact, in zip forms, I'll show you in just a moment, you can't fill them out in zip forms. It will not physically allow you to fill them out in zip forms. Neither should you be going through the home with the seller and writing in words or writing in the check boxes should not be doing any of that. So let's chat real quick about the exempt seller disclosure. So the exempt seller disclosure is uh, actually let's go to sharing the screen. Boom, there we go. All right, the exempt seller disclosure. So there are very, very, very rare times when a seller is exempt from filling out the TDS. Those times are if it's a probate sale, foreclosure sale, bankruptcy, or do eminent domain transfer, things like this, the client, the seller does not need to fill those out. Now, in uh, transfers where the property has to go back to the bank, you know, short sales, things like this, again, they are not required to fill out seller disclosures except for the exempt. When the seller is the fiduciary and they're administering a trust, a guardianship, a conservatorship, or an estate, again, then they do not have to fill out the full TDS and SPQ. Rather, what they're going to fill out are these brief questions. Remember how I told you that you cannot click on these? This is what I mean. Editable by seller is what I get when I click on these, see, editable by seller one. But you still should go through and explain these to your seller. And essentially what you're going to do is what you can do. What you can do is you can fill out the top section with the APN, city, county, and then you can scroll down so you can explain to the the client, look, most sellers and transactions are required to provide a transfer disclosure statement. However, some sellers are exempt from filling this out. Um, sellers who are not legally required to fill out the transfer disclosure statement can use this form and make other required disclosures, including the disclosure of material fact of which they are aware. Fantastic. And then um, you're going to ask your seller to fill these out. And then again, where you can sign is, or where you can edit the form is all down here. But up here, you cannot make any edits. Now, you are going to have sellers that will ask you questions. Um, for example, the first question on the um, exempt seller disclosure the ESD, the first question there is within the last three years has a death, let me rephrase that, it's a weird one. Within the last three years, are you aware of the death of an occupant of the property upon the property? The seller may ask you, well, what if it was a natural death or an unnatural death? How do I know when I need to put that in here? you as an agent can come back to them and say, you know, this actually includes any death on the property, but you are not to fill out yes or no. I hope I'm making that perfectly clear. The TDS, the SPQ, and the AVID are the three forms that if you do go to court, if your client takes you to court, if your client ends up in court, those are the three forms that get blown up on a big screen. You want to make sure that you've done everything properly, right? Make sure you fill out your AVID properly. Go back and watch the video about the AVID. The TDS and the SPQ, if your handwriting is on there, 
they're going to call that out, right? So just be really cautious. At the end of this, I'm going to go through and show you guys a product that I like to use that kind of just takes away the stress of this, okay? So that's the exempt seller disclosure. Let me go back to show you this. That's the exempt seller disclosure. They'll fill out these items here. And then at the bottom here, it'll ask any other material facts or defects affecting the property or material documents in the seller's possession. Okay, material documents in the seller's possession. If we're not sure if a document is pertinent or not, let's go ahead and disclose. Our best bet is to disclose, disclose, disclose. If the seller thinks, should I disclose? If I think, should I disclose? I'm going to disclose. And then they can include their attached information or make note of that below here. Fabulous. I'm putting out a lot of acronyms to you. TDS, SPQ, AVID, ESD. Get to know these, add them to your vernacular. It's agent speak. You know, I'm not going to tell a client, hey, make sure you fill out that TDS. I'll tell the client, make sure you fill out that transfer disclosure statement. But when it's agents to agents, agents to TCs, it's, it's typically the TDS, the SPQ, we use the short form. So get to know what your commonly used forms are. Let's go over the TDS and the SPQ now. Uh, I'm going to touch on the seller property questionnaire first. Again, I'm going to scroll down so that you guys can see this. You cannot make edits here. Editable by seller one, because you shouldn't be doing that, right? Um, if, let me um, tell you this, if your seller is someone who, I, I've had this specific situation happen before, a seller was someone that could not physically move around the house. So what they did is upon my suggestion, who do you know and trust? Who's someone in your family that can come help you with this? Okay, cool. So they had someone come over that person. I printed out the SPQ, the TDS for them, and they walked around with a pen and paper and they made those notes. You can have someone else that the seller trusts do this. Shouldn't be you, shouldn't be your assistant, shouldn't be your mother-in-law. You should have no form of using these forms as far as you filling them out. Cute little puppy pick for you back there. Okay. The TDS, or excuse me, we're on the SPQ. Um, make sure that you are using the correct revision. They'll get revised every so often. So this is not a substitute for the TDS. It is used by the seller to provide additional information when the TDS is completed. Again, if the seller is exempt from completing a TDS, the seller should complete the ESD or use this form instead. Already fantastic. And then here you see this huge note um, they should review the disclosure information advisory. That's one of the forms that you should get signed when you have listings, when you get the listing signed. And in that disclosure information advisory form, it explains very thoroughly what all these forms are to the seller. So again, you'll fill out this information up here. Note to the seller, the purpose of this is to tell the buyer any known material or specific items affecting the value or desirability of the property to help eliminate the misunderstanding about the condition of the property. And then it'll give them some key items to consider. Note to the buyer, pretty much the same, same sentence here. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, moving on, seller awareness. It'll ask them, are you aware, yes or no? Yeah, here, yes or no. And then um, any reports, inspections, disclosures, warranties, maintenance recommendations, the seller can attach those here as well. 
fantastic. And then tons of questions. You want to make sure that you understand these questions because you're going to get asked, hey, uh, this survey easement and encroachment boundary disputes, tell me more about this. You know, one time your seller may say to you, one time I had a, a neighbor. Yeah, let's go with the neighbor. One time I had a neighbor come through and tell me that this side of the house is actually par partially on his land and that we should get a surveyor because their property line might be blurred with our property line. Well, Mrs. Seller, that does sound like it's possibly a boundary dispute. If you're aware of something like that, it's, it's literally asking him, are you aware? Yeah, oh, okay, then sounds like you've answered your own question. All right, moving forward. Just know these stuff, these things, you guys. It is literally your job to know and understand each of these questions. If you don't ask, ask advice, whether it's Karina, whether it's EXP Broker Room, Forms Advisor, right here, Forms Advisor and Forms Tutor. If you don't know something, click on these and you'll get to know your answer very quickly. Alrighty, so that's the SPQ. Let's move on to the TDS, Transfer Disclosure Statement. Same situation here, fill out this um, portion up here where you know the information. And then again, gray, you cannot add information here. It is very important that you your TC will check too. However, this is your responsibility. It is important that you make sure that each section in the TDS, the SPQ, the AVID, each section is filled out. If your seller, I've actually had this happen before, before the days of, of tech tools like Clyde, I had a seller forget to fill out this bottom portion right here. Three days before close of escrow, my TC alerted me to it right here. Our compliance department alerted me to it. Actually, this was way back in the day. So it was uh, another brokerage. Their compliance department alerted me to it. I was then told that the buyers had five days to back out of contract if they didn't like any of our answers there. It's called the rescission. They have a right to rescind anything that they find out to be new material facts. Because if my sellers had told them, oh, you know what? The 220 volt wiring is actually nowhere in the house. This house is completely, um, the electricity is old. That would have given the buyers five days to back out of contract. So once your seller completes these, it's important that you go back through and make sure everything is checked off. Here's another great example. Are you aware of any defects or malfunctions in the property? Okay, if your seller selects yes, you better make sure that there is an explanation here. If there's not, you are opening your sellers up to a five day rescission period and you don't want that. So make sure that you're understanding of all this information and that it's filled out. It is incredibly important. The AVID information gets added here to be completed, this first section here, to be completed only if the seller is represented by an agent. Okay, so they filled that out. And then the second part, the second part is to be completed only if the agent who has obtained the offer is different than this, the agent above. So this is for the listing agent, this is for the buyer's agent. As a listing agent, you should always have your AVID complete at the time that your seller's disclosures are complete. So ideally, you are going to have this checkbox clicked there and you'll have your AVID to attach to this. Now, um, I also wanna show you guys really quick the DIA, Disclosure Information Advisory. And don't worry, if these acronyms don't roll off your tongue really easy at first, they will, don't worry, they definitely will. DIA. 
Exposure Information Advisory. Okay, cool. So this is a three page form explaining to the sellers what they're filling out, what all these disclosures mean. Don't leave any questions blank or unanswered. I'm trying to see if I can find. Here it is. This is literally the last sentence, you guys. When in doubt, the best answer to the question, do I need to disclose? The best answer is yes, disclose it. Let the buyer know. All right, cool. Let's move on with tech tools that can help us out. So I personally like to use a, um, a product called Glide. It's www.glide.com. And it is a tool that will help your sellers um, fill out these forms and ask questions to you directly in a kind of like a turbo tax way. So it'll start out. And um, first off, let me show you what you're seeing, right? So what you're seeing here is this is a property address for seller disclosures. <laughs> She's all crying back there. Seller's disclosures. So you can invite the seller to fill out seller disclosures. You can open natural hazard disclosures. You can fill in and add your avid here. I'm gonna click this um, select forms and add invite sellers. Let's invite the sellers. Cool, I'm gonna have them fill out both the SPQ, the TDS, and then you could have them fill out other information here as well. And these are like the basic listing agreement info pages that you would need, like the FERPDA, fire hardening, lead-based paint. Okay, we're gonna continue forward. You'll fill out all this info. Oh, it's gonna make me, it'll make me pop in there. That's okay. Um, we're not for the sake of this video, we're not gonna fill out all that information. But essentially, it's a tech tool that you send it to your sellers in an email, they get this email and they go through item by item by item and they can fill out their own disclosures. So I hope that the biggest piece that you took away from this is that you are never to fill out seller disclosures. If your seller cannot fill out those disclosures, they need to get someone that can or hire an attorney to help them out with that. At the end of the day, it is not within the scope of your duty to be doing this. However, it is within the scope of your duty to make sure that the sellers fill this out as clearly as possible. If they're not gonna be using a PDF fill out tool, if they're not gonna be using Glide, if they're gonna be using good old chicken scratch, make sure that their um, handwriting is legible. You don't want the word chicken to come out like, I don't even know, chimney, right? Or chimney to come out like chicken. So make sure that you read your forms before you submit them in to your disclosures. And then um, make sure you have a really clean disclosure package. My biggest suggestion is to have that disclosure package ready to go before you go on the market. That way, any buyer that's going to come through already has all the information that they need in order to make a really well thought out offer rather than just throwing in an offer without knowing anything. I hope this was helpful to you. Let us know if you have any additional questions. Please don't forget that EXP Broker Room will assist you with any additional questions that you have. Ask us on Slack. There's tons of great information on there as well. Thanks so much.